Ladies and gentlemen, this Red Gaming Tech Com video. You know what's awesome? Well, if you said Red Gaming Tech and yourself for watching us, you'd be 100% correct. But apart from that, DirectX 12, we have two really, really awesome pieces of news. The first is that Xbox One's DirectX 12 will be debuting at GDC. The second important part is that, well, DirectX 12... Brad Wardell, and I'm sure you all know who he is by now, but I'll go through the motions. He is the CEO of Stardock, of course, and he said that he's been showing off videos of some of the projects they're working on with DX12, and you can hear some excitement in my voice. And believe it or not, well, actually, that's the thing. The partners, their own partners, did not believe Brad. He did not, they did not believe that this stuff was running in real time. I'll read out the quotes to you. Plus, we're announcing a new game that we demoed at Microsoft Booth, AMD, and elsewhere. DX12 claims may true. Ironically, some of our own partners insisted on seeing it live because they did not believe the video we sent in was real. Seeing so many people saying DX12 just can do the things I've tweeted, but I was referring to things that I've actually witnessed. Now, he did state that right now this is not coming to the Xbox One, uh, in other words, his personal project. He says right now their own demo is running natively at 4K, which is absolutely insane, at least in my opinion, and is, as I said, PC only, and it's possible, however, it might become converted to the Xbox One. But interesting, he says we don't have anything for the Xbox One yet, he's referring to it, of course, Stardog, but yes... There will be some X1 content, content. I'm sorry, using DirectX 12, the last I heard. And he asked, well, was this content actually made using hardware available, or is it using this unreleased GPU? And he said, no, this is actual current consumer-level hardware. Now, if you're not too familiar with the... Um, unreleased GPU. Brad made some tweets a while back stating that he was doing some testing on an unreleased GPU. I have no idea what it is. I could guesstimate it's going to be the new Radeon cards or it could be of course the new let's say new Titan assuming that that's going to be released soonish or it could be let's say the 980 tie which once again I'm assuming is going to be released or it could be something completely different. I are just guessing to be totally blunt. But let's just focus on current hardware. This is incredible. Now, someone did ask him, is DirectX 12 the new era in gaming? And Brad said, yeah, I think so. Now, regular viewers will know that I have been benchmarking the R9 290X in the background. One of the reasons that I've been kind of a bit quiet the last few days is because I've been benchmarking as well as I'm preparing to start a new job in London which is eating up a lot of my time I've been preparing for commute and I've got to say the idea of actually traveling to London's okay I don't really have any problems but geez uh, but the trains are not friends but anyway going back on track if you excuse the pun Regarding the R9 290X, I've been playing around a little bit with Mantle. Now, we have had Mantle, um, of course, when we did the 280 review, the R9 280 and a few other cards. But here's the thing. I'm astounded by the performance difference between Mantle and um, regular DX11. Now, of course, Mantle, for those of you who are not too familiar... It's very similar to DX12 in the basic premise. Um, in other words, DX12 is low level, Mantle is low level. I'm going to ignore the performance difference between them because it's supposedly kind of in the air. There are some who are saying that DX12 is slightly behind Mantle when it comes to AMD's own hardware, which is not really a surprise, but that could be cleaned up in the future, or it could be that Mantle actually performs inferior to DX12 when the GPUs are fine. well, sorry, when it's finally released. However, I've been doing some benchmarking, and I've I've been doing it with Thief, and I'm actually looking at this, I've actually got a video editing software in the background, and the minimum frame rate, and this is the, this is the exciting thing, at least, this is 1080p, I do have some 1440p stuff, but I'll just refer to 1080p just for the sake of it really but this is just to let you know the difference i mean the minimum frame rate with mantle is 69 frames a second and i i've been dead on right smack bang right there 69 fps with the minimum of dx11 is 32 frames a second that's that's not 
a small difference. That's astounding. Just think of that for minimum. Now, admittedly, minimum frame rate, it could dip like that for like one frame or whatever, but I did repeat these tests a couple of times, and the minimum, minimum frame rate didn't really seem to change that much between them. Now, the maximum frame rate was not a massive jump. It was 113 versus 100, and let's just call it 130. But the average frame rate shot up from 58.4 frames a second to 96.4. The reason I bring Mantle into this is just to illustrate that this is like current technology. In other words, all these game engines did was really to be slightly adopted to move towards them. So you can imagine the benefits that a full DX12 orientated title could really do. It's a staggering performance difference, and there are other games as well. But as I've said, I'll be covering this much more in depth in the R9 to 90X review. But even aside from all of that, ignoring, you know, AMD into this, the fact of the matter is, it's going to be a really exciting time, and I personally am really my mouth is basically watering at the idea of actually analysing the GDC 2015 slides. I really, 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 I'm begging Microsoft to show us something on DX12 and the Xbox One. And by which I don't, I don't mean just a screenshot. I want to know how it's going to interact with the GPU. Now, some of you are probably aware that we've done a full analysis on Xbox One's SDK. We still need to do a few things before anyone pipes up. Yes, I do know I need to do the audio processes and a few other bits, but majority of the, like, the main components, I suppose, are, for the most part, covered. Um, and you'll know that, so far, the Xbox One, it has a few uh, custom parts. The graphics command processor, there's a couple of them in there, just like the PlayStation 4. That's not GPU, I just want to reiterate. There's not two GPUs inside the Xbox One. We're talking graphics command processors. If you need to know what exactly what they do, you can go ahead and uh, look at the SDK analysis. But, effectively speaking... There's a couple of customizations, but from what we know, the Xbox One's SD, uh, GPU is basically DX11.1 or 2. Uh, Microsoft say it's kind of between the two, but there are a couple of customizations, but they've not really gone super in-depth into what those are. So, what I'd like to know is what exactly DX12 is going to do for the Xbox One. And this is, by the way, a very similar question to what I have for the PC. Because... Let's assume that you've got an R9 290 or you've got a GTX 970 or a GTX 700 series. It's irrelevant. Something along those lines. They do support DX12. It says right there on the box, in fact, that NVIDIA's GPUs. But here's the funny thing. There are some specific stuff which is only going to work on DX12 fully compliant GPUs. So it's like, what that stuff is, and we know some of it, but not all of it, nowhere near enough, and I'm hearing some rumours that DX12, and I've covered those just the other day, that DX12 is going to allow SLI cross fiery situations between AMD and NVIDIA. So, once again, just, just pick on, say, the GTX, let's say you've got a GTX 680, or let's say 780, and you happen to pick up a cheap R9 290, I'm just obviously picking two GPUs at random, from the rumours, you'll actually be able to run those two GPUs together. And that's really interesting. Basically, I'm making this video a lot longer than what I intended, as I tend to do. You know, I'm a bit of a rambly guy. But I'm really genuinely excited about DX12. And if even half of what Brad and other developers are stating to be true is, well, true and accurate... I think it's going to be a very interesting time for gamers. Incredibly interesting. Um, and as I've mentioned dozens of times now, we've got so many emerging technologies. We've got 4K. We've got virtual reality. We've got screens, of course, which are... And this is not, by the way, including free sync, G-Sync, and other types of technologies which really do push the frame rate up or require higher frame. And I was going to point out 3D monitors, but personally, uh, meh, not really that convinced with them personally. Maybe maybe you have a different opinion, but meh, I'm not really... Uh, same thing with the 3DS. I've tried the 3DS, uh, and I just tried, tried to like the 3D, but I just couldn't get into it. What The only couple of technologies that really impressed me in terms of display recently are, and I, I, display is a loose term, but virtual reality, I've got the Oculus Rift, 
that's really impressive and high resolution like 4k looks pretty brilliant to be totally honest on larger screens with if you've got a game that can natively output it it looks really gorgeous i wouldn't say it's as revolutionary maybe as vr and the only reason i point that out is because vr has a hell of a long way to go and when i tried say half-life 2 on it i've tried half-life 2 and some other games holy crap if you know anyone this is my honest opinion if you know anyone that has an oculus rift beg them to try it because it's a really surreal experience um and i've got one of the early prototype dev kits and they've improved it significantly but anyway i i'm r rambling quite a bit now so i'm gonna leave you to it but um hopefully you've enjoyed the video and found it i don't know informative interesting one of the positive words maybe but for now i will let you guys go take care and bye for now